In the silent vacuum of space where the stars themselves whispered ancient secrets, a shadow darker than the void itself crept across the cosmos. It was an entity, a force, that devoured light and life with equal indifference, leaving behind only the cold echo of civilizations that once thrived in vibrant cacophony. This was the horror that began to seep into the collective consciousness of the galaxy's myriad inhabitants, an unstoppable tide washing over worlds with a hunger insatiable. They were the Mechron, once in a deep sleep, but now fully awake, with one goal in mind, wiping out every civilization they could find. At the heart of this brewing storm stood Earth, a planet of green and blue, teeming with life, unassuming in its corner of the galaxy. It was here, in a room washed in the sterile light of monitors and the hum of electronic vigilance, that General Alastair Irons received the briefing that would alter the course of human history. General, started the aide, her voice a mix of urgency and trepidation. Reports are coming in from the outer colonies, entire systems wiped out. No survivors. Her words hung heavy, a dreadful symphony to the imagery of desolation flashing across the screens. Irons, a figure carved from the very stone of duty and resolve, let his gaze linger on the images of ruin. His mind raced, not with fear, but with the cold, calculating precision of a seasoned strategist. And our alien allies? He inquired, his voice betraying none of the storm that brewed within. They're just as in the dark as we are about their abilities, sir. It's like nothing we've faced before. The aide's eyes were a mirror to the chaos unfurling across the galaxy. A moment passed, a brief respite in the onslaught of grim tidings, before Irons turned to the assembly of military leaders and scientists gathered in the war room. Then we must prepare, he declared, his voice a beacon of unwavering determination. Earth must not fall as others have. We will stand our ground. The room erupted into a cacophony of voices, each member of the assembly throwing in their lot, ideas and strategies weaving together in a tapestry of defiance. Amidst the fervor, Irons remained the eye of the storm, his mind already at work, plotting, planning. As the meeting drew to a close, Irons found himself standing before the panoramic view of Earth provided by the war room's grand windows. Beside him, Dr. Alara Vance, the mind behind many of Earth's most advanced technologies, watched the world turn below. General, if I may, Vance began, her tone measured. Our technology may not be on par with some of our allies, but what we lack in power, we make up for in ingenuity. There's a way through this, I'm sure of it. Irons turned to her, a slight smile breaking through the stoic facade. That's exactly why humanity has always prevailed, Dr. Vance. Ingenuity, resolve, and an uncanny knack for surviving the unsurvivable. His gaze returned to the earth below, a silent vow hanging unspoken between them. With the gravity of their situation sinking in, General Alastair Irons took upon the monumental task of rallying Earth's defense. It was not just a matter of marshalling forces, it was about knitting together a patchwork of humanity's brightest and bravest, a veritable shield against the encroaching darkness. Among these luminaries stood Dr. Elora Vance and Captain Leo Maddox, each a titan in their own right, brought together by the impending storm. Vance, with her intellect as boundless as the cosmos, was already deep in conversation with Irons as they approached the hangar where the resurgence sat, a testament to human engineering and resolve. If we're to stand any chance, we need to push the limits of what we believe is possible, she was saying her eyes alight with the fierce joy of challenge. Maddox, on the other hand, was inspecting the resurgence, his command. His presence commanded respect, not just for his prowess as a pilot, but for his uncanny ability to rally his crew against insurmountable odds. She'll hold, he assured Irons with a grin as they approached, and then some, we'll give them a run for their money. The task of uniting Earth's defenses was daunting, yet Irons' resolve served as a beacon, drawing in not just Earth's finest, but skeptical eyes from across the stars. Alien representatives, wary of humanity's untested metal, stood shoulder to shoulder with Irons and his team, their doubts hanging in the air like the charged silence before a storm. It's not just about what we bring to the fight. Irons addressed the assembly, his voice a steady tide against the swell of uncertainty. 
It's about how we stand together, united not just in our fight for survival, but in our resolve to prevail. We are humanity, and in our unity, we find our strength. The room, filled with beings from across the galaxy, fell into a contemplative hush. Vance stepped forward, her gaze sweeping over the gathered assembly. We've made leaps and bounds in technology, but it's our ingenuity, our ability to think outside the confines of what's known, that will turn the tide. Together, we'll craft a strategy that leverages our strengths. Maddox added, the light of battle already kindling in his eyes. And we'll be the tip of the spear. The resurgence and her crew are ready to lead the charge. We'll set the example, show them what we're made of. The skepticism that once clouded the eyes of their alien counterparts began to dissipate, replaced by a burgeoning respect for the tenacity and spirit of humanity. Iron's words, Vance's conviction, and Maddox's unwavering confidence wove together a tapestry of unity, a shared determination to face the darkness not as disparate forces, but as a single, indomitable entity. As the meeting disbanded, plans set into motion. Irons, Vance, and Maddox stood together, a momentary calm amidst the brewing storm. They'll come to see, Irons mused, watching the retreating figures of their new allies. Humanity isn't just fighting for survival. We're fighting for the future, and in that future there's no force in the universe that can stand against us united. The edge of an alien solar system became the unlikely stage for humanity's confrontation with the mechanized adversary. Here, in the cold expanse where the sun's warmth was but a distant caress, the resurgence and her fleet, a coalition of human and alien vessels, stood watch. The mood was one of tense anticipation, a collective breath held before the plunge into the unknown. Sergeant Maya Torres, a figure of resolute determination, oversaw the preparations of her special forces unit aboard one of the smaller, more maneuverable human ships. Her reputation as a master of unconventional warfare was well-earned, and her team was a reflection of her adaptability and ingenuity. We're smaller, we're quicker, and we're smarter. Let's use that. As if on cue, the void ripped open, disgorging the enemy in a flood of darkness and malice. Their ships, vast and seemingly impervious, advanced with a chilling, methodical precision. The alien allies, seasoned warriors in their own right, watched in grim silence, their doubts about humanity's place in this battle lingering like specters. The first volleys were exchanged in a blaze of light and fury, the vastness of space alight with the fires of combat. Human and alien technologies clashed against the invader's superior might, a testament to the resilience and courage of the assembled fleet. It was Torres who turned the tide. With a nod from Irons, she executed a daring maneuver, her ship darting forth like a spear into the heart of the storm. Her team boarded an enemy vessel, a feat thought impossible by their allies. The corridors of the enemy ship became a labyrinth of chrome and danger, yet Torres and her team moved with the precision of ghosts, their actions guided by a singular purpose. The mission was twofold, sabotage and intelligence gathering. The data they collected, even as they sowed chaos within the enemy ranks, was invaluable, offering a glimpse into the invaders' technology and, potentially, their weaknesses. The cost was high. Each member of Torres's team knew the risks, yet they pressed on, driven by a fierce determination to protect their home, their loved ones, and the very fabric of their reality from the encroaching darkness. Back on the resurgence, Maddox and Vance coordinated the fleet's movements with a balletic precision, each maneuver a counterpoint to the enemy's advances. The information relayed by Torres opened new avenues of attack, exploiting momentary weaknesses that the human-alien coalition pressed with desperate fervor. As the skirmish reached its crescendo, a critical hit to the enemy's flagship, thanks to the intelligence gathered by Torres, disabled the Mekron ship, a ripple of disbelief and shock running through both the human-led fleet and the enemy alike. In the aftermath, the coalition breathed a collective sigh of relief, though it was tempered by the knowledge of the cost. Torres and her surviving team were hailed as heroes, their bravery a beacon of hope in the face of an overwhelming adversary. Maddox clapped a hand on Torres's shoulder as they surveyed the damage to their fleet, a mutual respect evident in their gaze. That was one hell of a play, Torres, he said, his voice carrying the weight of the battle just fought. Torres, her face marked by the soot of battle and the somber weight of loss, nodded. We did what we had to do, Captain. 
We'll do it again when the time comes. For Earth. For humanity. The victory, though costly, served as a stark reminder of humanity's tenacity and willingness to face the chrome menace with courage and resolve. It was a message, loud and clear, to the invaders and to the galaxy at large. Underestimate humanity at your peril. In the aftermath of their first victorious but pyrrhic engagement with the enemy, the atmosphere among the crew of the resurgence was one of cautious optimism, tinged with the sharp edge of loss. It was within this crucible of mixed emotions that Lieutenant Hikaru Sato found herself wrestling with the key to unlocking the enemy's intentions, a complex encrypted transmission intercepted during the skirmish. Sequestered in her dimly lit quarters, surrounded by screens aglow with cryptic symbols and data streams, Sato worked with a relentless determination. The transmission was unlike anything she had encountered before, its structure defying every known cryptographic method. Yet, in this challenge, Sato saw not an insurmountable wall, but a puzzle begging to be solved. As hours melded into days, her efforts began to bear fruit. Piece by piece, the encryption yielded, revealing its secrets in whispers and shadows. Got you, she breathed a triumphant smile breaking through the concentration etched on her face. The decrypted message outlined the enemy's upcoming maneuvers, a tapestry of invasion, reinforcements, and conquest that chilled the blood. Without delay, Sato brought her findings to Irons, Vance, and Maddox, the core of the resurgence's leadership. Gathered around a holographic display, they absorbed the gravity of the intelligence she had unearthed. This isn't just a map of their movements. Irons mused, his eyes tracing the arcs and lines of projected trajectories. It's a window into their strategy. The Mechron, in their also devastating efficiency, had one weakness, their hive mind, one controller leading millions of Mechron, and we just decrypted their transmission protocols. Vance leaned in, her mind already racing with the implications. And an opportunity for us, she added. If we know where they're going to strike, we can prepare. A countermeasure. Perhaps something that can exploit this insight. The gears of innovation and strategy began to turn, fueled by the spark of Sato's breakthrough. Together they brainstormed, a synergy of military acumen and scientific genius weaving the fabric of a new plan. It was Vance who proposed the daring idea. A weapon that could disrupt the enemy's coordination, throwing their meticulously planned maneuvers into chaos. Based on the tech we recovered and Sato's decrypted data, I think we can engineer a device that targets their communication networks, creating a window for us to strike. Maddox, ever the tactician, saw the potential for a decisive blow. If we can disorient them, even for a moment, that's all the opening we'll need. Torres and her team could wreak havoc in their ranks. The plan was audacious, teetering on the brink of the impossible, which made it quintessentially human. Sato's role was pivotal, her decryption not just a technical triumph, but a beacon of hope, illuminating a path forward against the darkness. As they set to work, transforming theory into tangible action, the bond between them was palpable. Here, in the heart of the resurgence, humanity's indomitable spirit was on full display, a testament to their resourcefulness and adaptability. Sato, watching the flurry of activity her discovery had sparked, felt a surge of pride. We're not just fighting back, she said, more to herself than anyone else. We're outsmarting them. As the enemy's shadow lengthened across the stars, Earth's defenders, under the command of Captain Leo Maddox and Sergeant Maya Torres, embraced the darkness to become specters against their adversaries. The vast void of space, once a realm of exploration and wonder, had transformed into an arena of guerrilla warfare where the cunning and bravery of humanity's soldiers were tested against an implacable foe. Maddox, piloting the resurgence with a deft hand that seemed to blur the lines between man and machine, led his fleet in a series of hit-and-run attacks that confounded the enemy. Each strike was meticulously planned, the element of surprise their greatest weapon. Remember, folks, Maddox would say, his voice crackling over the comms, we're the ghosts haunting their nightmares, in and out before they know what hit them. Torres, meanwhile, led her team on daring boarding missions, each a masterclass in precision and audacity. The corridors of enemy ships became their stage, a deadly dance of shadow and flame. Torres moved with a grace born of fierce determination, her team a seamless extension of her will. 
In one breathless moment, they would materialize from the void, plant their charges, and vanish, leaving chaos in their wake. The impact of these raids was palpable, a series of stinging blows that, while not fatal, served to disrupt the enemy's advance and sow seeds of doubt. In the dim light of the resurgence's briefing room, Maddox and Torres, alongside their crew, reviewed the outcomes of their latest operations. The holographic displays painted a vivid picture of their achievements, yet the shadow of loss hung heavy in the air. It's a war of attrition we're playing, Maddox observed, his gaze meeting each of his crew in turn. Every victory costs us, but we're making them bleed, forcing them to second-guess their every move. Torres, her expression a mask of resolve tempered with the weight of command, added, We keep hitting them, keep them off balance. It's more than just buying time. It's showing them we won't roll over. Not now, not ever. The camaraderie among the crew, forged in the crucible of conflict, was a light against the encroaching darkness. Their banter, though tinged with the gravity of their situation, was a testament to their unyielding spirit. Just give me five minutes on their flagship, one of Torres's team joked. I'll redecorate it with a new airlock or two. Maddox smiled, the burden of command momentarily lifted. Let's keep them guessing then. We've got the guts and the guile. Let's make sure they remember who they're messing with. The tide of war, ever fickle, began to shift in a way few had dared hope. In the heart of the resurgence's research labs, Dr. Alara Vance, surrounded by a malic whirl of data and alien artifacts, had achieved what many considered impossible. With a triumphant gleam in her eye, she presented her findings to General Alistair Irons and the rest of the leadership team. We've managed to reverse engineer their technology, she announced, her voice a mix of exhaustion and exhilaration. Not only can we defend against them more effectively, but we can also turn their own weapons against them. Irons, whose strategic mind had been grappling with the relentless advance of the enemy, regarded Vance's breakthrough as the long-awaited break in the clouds. Show me, he said, his tone carrying the weight of countless decisions made in the shadow of uncertainty. Vance led them through the intricacies of her work, a weapon system designed to disrupt the enemy's energy shields, leaving them vulnerable to conventional attacks. The science behind it was complex, a dance of physics and alien engineering, but its elegance was in its simplicity. Brilliant, Irons murmured, already considering the implications. Prepare for deployment. We'll need every ship equipped with this system. It's time to take the fight to them. The subsequent days were a blur of activity. Ships were refitted, strategies revised, and crews briefed on the new weapon. Maddox, charged with leading the counterattack, radiated a confidence that was infectious. Looks like we've got a new trick up our sleeve, he quipped to his crew, their spirits buoyed by the prospect of turning the tables on their seemingly invincible foe. Torres, ever the pragmatist, drilled her team on the revised tactics that would accompany the use of the new weapon. We hit them hard and fast, she instructed, her demeanor all business. Disrupt, engage, disengage. No heroics. We're in this to win, not to make martyrs. The first engagement using Vance's weapon was a revelation. As the resurgence and its fleet engaged the enemy, the moment of truth arrived. The weapon activated, a pulse of energy that rippled through space and struck the enemy's vanguard. Shields flickered and died, and for the first time, the invaders' ships were laid bare to human aggression. The battle was fierce, but the tide had indeed turned. Maddox's tactics, a blend of precision strikes and evasive maneuvers, capitalized on the enemy's newfound vulnerability. Irons, overseeing the operation from the resurgence's command center, allowed himself a rare smile as reports of success flooded in. In the aftermath, the victory was not just in the physical reclaiming of space or the destruction of enemy ships, it was in the symbolic defiance of a species that refused to be extinguished. We've shown them, Irons said addressing his crew and the Allied forces. We've shown them that humanity will not go quietly. This is but the first step. We will take back our galaxy, inch by inch if we must. Vance, witnessing the fruits of her labor and the collective effort of the fleet, felt a surge of pride. This is what happens when you underestimate humans, she mused, sharing a look of camaraderie with Irons and Maddox. We adapt, we overcome, and we fight back. Later on in the swirling maelstrom of war, the Galeric's cluster emerged as the arena for a pivotal showdown. 
This collection of stars, planets, and nebulae was more than just a celestial landmark. It was a lifeline for the Allied civilizations, rich in resources and strategic positions. General Alastair Irons, understanding the cluster's significance, marshaled his forces for what would be either a monumental victory or a devastating defeat. The resurgence, bearing the scars and honors of battles past, floated at the heart of the assembled fleet. Irons, alongside Vance, Maddox, and Torres, poured over the holographic maps and intelligence reports that painted a daunting picture of the task ahead. We strike here, Irons declared, his finger pinpointing a seemingly innocuous sector of the cluster. It's the least defended, but it offers us a way in. Their arrogance will be their undoing. Vance chimed in, her eyes alight with the thrill of challenge. The new weapons have been integrated into the fleet. They won't know what hit them until it's too late. Her confidence was a testament to the strides humanity had made in harnessing the enemy's technology against them. Maddox, ever the tactician, nodded in agreement. Speed and stealth, he mused. Hit them hard before they can regroup. It's bold, risky. I like it. Torres, who had been quietly assessing the plan, added her perspective. My team's ready for some up-close and personal work. We'll make sure their command never knows what hit them. The camaraderie and mutual respect among them were palpable, each leader embodying the best of humanity's resilience and ingenuity. As the fleet moved into position, the void of space around the Galeric's cluster became a tense prelude to the impending storm. Irons's strategy hinged on surprise and precision, leveraging the newfound weaknesses in the enemy's defenses. The Allied fleet, a mix of human and alien vessels, moved with a cohesion that belied the diversity of its composition. The initial engagement was a masterclass in tactical warfare. Maddox led the vanguard, the resurgence cutting through the enemy's outer defenses like a knife through the void. The shock of the attack, bolstered by the effectiveness of Vance's weapons, sowed chaos among the invaders. Torres and her team, aboard a nimble corvette, exploited the confusion, boarding key enemy platforms and disabling them from within. Their actions, swift and deadly, underscored the valor and skill of Earth's soldiers. As the battle raged, the Galeric's cluster became a testament to human determination. Each skirmish, each maneuver, was a step towards reclaiming not just the cluster, but hope itself. In the thick of the conflict, Irons remained a steady presence, directing the fleet with calm precision. Hold the line, he commanded, his voice a beacon amidst the cacophony of battle. This is our moment. The Siege of Galerix, as it would come to be known, was not just a battle. It was a declaration. Under Irons's command, the Allied fleet pushed forward, exploiting every advantage, every moment of surprise, to its fullest. As the tide of battle turned in their favor, a sense of awe spread among the Allied ranks. They were witnessing the impossible made possible, the culmination of human ingenuity, bravery, and the indomitable will to survive. The enemy, reeling from the onslaught, began to falter, their invincible facade crumbling under the relentless assault of the human-led alliance. In the aftermath, as the dust of combat settled and the stars of the Galerix cluster shone once more, Irons and his leaders surveyed the field. They had achieved the unthinkable, a decisive victory against the Mechron menace. We did it, Maddox said, his voice thick with emotion, against all odds. Vance, looking out at the battered but triumphant fleet, added, This is more than a victory. It's a turning point. And Torres, her armor scorched and dented, offered a weary but triumphant smile. Let's see them try to underestimate us now. Together they stood on the brink of a new dawn. The siege of Galerix not just a battle won, but a symbol of hope for the galaxy. Irons, gazing into the vastness of space, knew this was but one chapter in a larger saga but it was a chapter where humanity had not merely survived, they had prevailed. If you've stuck with me up to this point, a heartfelt thank you. I'd also like to take a moment to remind you that my entire channel is dedicated to the Triverse and its enthralling Mechron Mechanoid saga. While many of the stories stand alone, allowing you to dive in at any point, crafting these narratives takes about four or five days each, so your patience is greatly appreciated. If you find yourself enjoying what you see, consider exploring more of my videos. Each one, in its own unique way, 
weaves together more of the overarching story I'm telling.